so so exactly here oh oh no please go sorry please no, no i was gonna say uh, yeah you start bradley how, how does this thing actually start so we can oh okay yeah sure let's first we'll just kick it off um hi hi everyone i'm bradley smith uh, i'm the narcissist with the youtube channel named after myself and i'm here talking about drawn together with the awesome creators of drawn together uh, the new guys talk Hey, uh, I'm Matt <laughs> and uh, and down down below me is uh, Dave Jesser. I mean, they they can't see who's above the others. So it seems like you're yeah. creating a very <laughs> big hierarchy already. Matt and I are equal <laughs> partners in this project. My name is Dave Jesser. There's Matt Silverstein, my equal in the same level. Sure. Partner. No, uh, I know you guys are going to pop up on the screen, I think, uh, whoever's talking, but I love it. You're just setting a metaphorical ladder. You're like, he is yes. below me, so. He is below, always below me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, though. We, know, we were already just immediately talking about the show. Um, it was great, so we were just getting into it. Uh, thank you guys for just kicking that off. I, uh, getting back into that, though, um, I wanted to say, so did you guys have a, like, you guys had probably a, a bit of a show Bible, character Bible for, like, what the characters would do, but you guys totally didn't mind going out of character for the sake of a joke. Go ahead, Dave. I oh, no, I was going to repeat what Matt said, because I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we were, as Matt said, we were in a lot of writer's rooms for shows with middling success. And a lot of times the funniest thing in the room didn't make it on the screen, because for whatever reason, they didn't want to hurt the character, the story, the network wasn't happy, uh, S&P. So we, we sort of decided that for Drawn Together, whatever the funniest thing was said, no matter whether it hurt a joke, hurt a story, or got us in trouble, or we would regret it later, we would put it in the show. <laughs> and that was sort of our guiding light. It was just, we, we hired some really, really fucking funny writers and funny voice actors. And whatever they could do, or whatever they came up with, we just wanted to get it in the cartoon because I, I don't know why you would censor yourself, especially, you know, we had an old boss who, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, Chris Thompson, who said, if you're going to go and do a Comedy Central show and not care about making money, at least at the time, Matt and Trey hadn't made, you know, a billion dollars yet. So we <laughs> weren't expecting a lot of money. He said, just don't follow the rules that we're following on this Fox Network show. Just be as funny and hire as many weirdos as you can. And that's what we did. Yeah, and then we had to fire some of those weirdos. Yeah. Well, what, one of those like weirdos. Another one of the weirdos. One of the weirdos try to literally light the other guy on fire. Uh, one writer, I, I probably shouldn't say his name, but he, he for some reason, the writer, he had lighter, like a, a thing of lighter oh, fluid. And he took it, he sprayed it uh, on Jordan Young, a writer, and then threatened to light him on fire. And yeah, so that, that's, the, that's the problem with hiring weirdos who don't give a shit. They're, will, they're will, that, will that get you fired? Trying to light someone else on fire in the writer's room? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we were warned about hiring these writers. Uh, they were a brother duo, and uh, we didn't listen because we wanted to be fucking punk rock and just yeah, hire so anybody. We, so Dave, we were we were warned not to hire them by a heroin addict. The guy <laughs> he was a heroin addict telling us, "Don't hire these guys. They're dangerous." Uh, <laughs> we're like, "No, no, don't worry. We know what we're doing. We're going to hire them. It's, it'll be fine." <laughs> So I mean, the source is unreliable. <laughs> that, yeah. is true. that is true. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that was sort of our mantra, was just, we got funny voice actors. We, we, you know, we worked with Rough Draft, who did Futurama, and we had some amazing artists and directors, and, and Pete Avanzino. They just happened to be available because Futurama was down, and they, were, you know, they weren't working, so they <laughs> were excited to work on, you know, work on this show. And it was great until we realized that... Uh, I guess what happened, man? Why did our show get canceled? I think. I think what happened also with the show was, um, <laughs> on top of having the funniest thing on the air, we were. If you said no, you can't do that. Then it became the most important thing for us to do, and eventually, you know, you, you, people are telling don't do that, and and you you keep doing it, it uh, it ends up in disaster, <laughs> and I think that's ultimately <laughs> what happened. I think we did lose a lot of advertisers, uh, got really upset with Comedy Central. And uh, I think that was it. Like the day we got canceled, there was also an article in the New York Times how we were like the number one show on college campuses, that we were beating football. And, and, and it was we we're like, oh, this is great. Oh, but we're also fired now. <laughs> 
So, so did you guys? Act, so you guys actually got a call about being canceled? Because uh, in the commentary for the movie, it's like you guys talk about you. You guys got a call being like, "Oh yeah, we'll get back to you on the next season before you guys take that job with Fox." And then you guys didn't yeah. hear about it for a week, and so you guys just moved on. That yeah, was kind of that's that's sort of how it went down, right? They were like, we they were like, we hadn't heard about another season. We had this other job offer. We're like, hey, we're gonna take this job offer. We're using it as leverage. And they were like, yeah, oh no, oh my gosh, we'll get right back to you. And then they didn't. And so that was, yeah, that was. Yeah, that's how we learned we were fired was by taking another. We had no choice but to take another job. We had like kids come in and and yeah, and we thought we we were told we were gonna get picked up. And the one thing, Matt, you didn't mention was uh, Viacom had just bought out Comedy Central. And I guess that was when the Pope or the Virgin Mary statue pissed blood on the Pope in that South Park episode. <laughs> and like the very, you know, right wing conservative Viacom board heard about this. Like, wait, what did we just buy? And they said, hey, can we get a bunch of clips? Someone put together a series of clips for Viacom to see what their shows were. But no one wanted to piss off south park guys so apparently someone told us the s p person the clip reel of inappropriate footage was all of our show mm-hmm. and i think by it was like it was like a two-hour clip reel of our of our show uh, all the things we probably we were told not to do yeah but uh, yeah that's weird because it's like and I, I you know this is the point you kind of make in the movie it's like when you put your show next to south park it's like you guys aren't necessarily going like too far out of the realm that they are you're doing gross out humor you're doing highly risque jokes inappropriate language you're you're pushing the envelope by but in the presentation of like say it's always sunny in philadelphia where it's terrible people saying terrible things so you're not looking at those characters like oh good uh, they're a role model for my life i'm gonna go act like captain hero no you're going oh my god look what he's doing yeah i think i think that was that was exactly our perspective at least i'd like to think that was our perspective but i i i I think it was just a little bit of bad luck in that South Park got to play under the umbrella of a small Comedy Central network with no one watching. Uh, no one, I guess, overseeing or being too upset about what they did. And then they started making the company a billion dollars. <laughs> like anything, then they then all of a sudden a billion dollar company buys them. And then they're like, wait, what are we doing? We got to be careful. So we got caught in a little bit of, because the first season we were on after South Park and we were basically keeping their ratings. So we were getting the same ratings as South Park. And then season two, they put us, not behind South Park and Viacom got upset and I think it you know it didn't work for us yeah. and also we don't do uh Matt and I don't do awesome voices I think that's really the problem Matt show them <laughs> some of the voices you do yeah. uh, I, I do I do a slightly deaf guy which is my natural voice I do uh I, you, did, I you did Ryan Seacrest I uh, know not Ryan. No, I did I did Dunkelman I was Dunkelman on the show Imagine Brian Duncan. For you youngsters who don't know, remember, uh, American Idol used to have two hosts, Ryan Seacrest and Brian Dunkelman. And Brian Dunkelman claimed he quit the show after the first season uh, for some reason. <laughs> uh, he was clearly fired, but he, he maintained that he quit. Uh, and, yeah, so we, we, we had him on. <laughs> so we had a friend who uh, we, had, we had, sorry, we had a writer on the show who was friends with him. And he said, hey, well, we can reach out to him and have him come on the show. He loves to make fun of himself. And we're like, oh, well, that's great. So then we wrote a script with Brian Dunkelman and it was just so vicious. Like we really made fun of him so much. And, and the friend was like, oh, no, no, bless you. He's going to love it. Brian, he really thinks it's funny that he, he he's not on American Idol anymore. And I guess he didn't find the script funny at all. Oh. And then he left a message on the writer's voicemail that was just like, how, what, is this what you think of me? How dare you? He's like, I'm not, not only am I not going to do the voice, if you do this script, I'm going to sue you. And, uh, and then he, and then he finally was like, at the, at the end of the message, he goes, I, I'm not a Dunkle man. I'm a Dunkle boy. Really? That's a line. He, he was so upset about that line. Yeah, that was Bradley. That was the big line was that, uh, when he was sad and drinking oh. and like, killing himself like yeah. Las Vegas style. I'm a dunkle I'm a, I'm a boy. So and yeah, so then he said, so then now of course he told us we can't do it. It became like, oh well we have to do it. And so we had a great lawyer on the show at the time who really allowed us to take some crazy chances. And he's like, all right, let's give it a shot. Let's see if he comes after us. So <laughs> yeah, I voiced Brian Dunkelman. And uh I'm assuming if he hasn't come after us by now, he's not- <laughs> 
If he had done that, though, and leaned into it, it would have been iconic. It's one of those things right? where he could have gotten his name back out there. And it's right? like, nope. Nope. Anyway, well, didn't well, do years that. later, didn't he do a short film or maybe it was a just an independent movie about himself? And it was, uh, it seemed, uh, the trailer was a little dramatic about what happened after he after he quit the show. That's what we're all looking for. We're looking for a dramatic Brian Dunkelman story. Right, in a short other, film. Everyone loves those. Love those. It was huge. <laughs> the, other, the other thing that we had, we did um, that Fat Albert parody uh, where we called out Bill Cosby as being yeah. a, a, a rapist. And that was another time our lawyer was like, yeah, let's give it a shot. There's enough allegations out there. And and we did. We got a letter from Bill Cosby to not do it. And we did it. And he didn't sue us because uh, apparently he's a rapist. So you oh. can call him a rapist because he is. Well, because in the in the show, there was someone alleging that he had, well, I guess the whole Fat Albert, or we call, had to call it Fat Allen in the game, <laughs> yeah. drugged Foxy, and she had a repressed memory about it. And I guess even the lawyer that talked to our lawyer allegedly said, listen, when Bill wants you to file a cease and desist, you got to do it. But there were so many allegations out there already. This was before the, you know, before you went to jail and all that. Yeah. Was like uh, before Hannibal brought Yeah, because it. Yeah. it was Hannibal's clip that, yeah, went viral. That really went viral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a chance and nobody cared when we called it. Bill no, Cosby. and that, I was going to say, that's why he didn't sue. Because then there would have been an article, Bill Cosby sues Comedy Central oh, show right. over allegation. And that would have drawn way more attention to it. And so that's why he didn't sue you guys. Oh, wow. that's such a bummer. We should have got him to sue. <laughs> I know, right? You should have been like, we're just, we should just put more of these jokes in now. <laughs> You're right, Bradley. God damn uh, that's that's crazy. I, yeah, that was one of my questions. There it was like, did you guys? And it said, yeah, it's crazy. You guys just knew the allegations were out there in the public eye. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting. Uh, yeah, that's why I always liked about your show too. Is exactly you guys try to act like you didn't have a point, and it's like, sure, maybe you didn't always have a overarching point for a whole plot line, but you guys always had little jabs here and there of social commentary that made it feel like yeah okay there's some intelligent people writing the show it's not just people hitting their heads with hammers <laughs> I, I randomly was this is a random story but i was at an army recruitment center there was someone i knew that was enlisting in the army and the guy who was he's like oh and how do you guys know each other and, and who are you and he found that i worked at drawn together he's like oh and this was an army recruitment guy <laughs> i love drawn together i love south park too i love both you guys and then he sat in seriously and leaned in he's like do you want to know the difference between Drawn Together and South Park? And now I'm being lectured by this army recruitment guy. <laughs> Drawn Together always, always makes you laugh. South Park makes you laugh. And it also makes you think. And I'm <laughs> like, what? I sit through this guy <laughs> about what yeah, I'm doing really- on my show. Oh, but you're right, but occasionally, but occasionally we would do that. Occasionally we would dip our toe in making people think and yeah, then when we realize have, that we're not smart enough for that. And then we'd go back to far. I think church. that was the point of the movie, right? With some, if we have something to say, we'll say it. We don't always, we don't want to claim that our show always is trying to say something because sometimes what we're trying to say is we thought this was fucking funny or weird. Or if the social commentary insane. doesn't age well, there's certain South Park episodes that you go back to now and you're like, oh yeah, okay. I mean, that was a, that was a time period. This is going to be the next 22 minutes. I, I kind of don't want to watch this again. And right. drawn together, I didn't feel like that with any episode in the way that it was like, okay, I, man, okay, this episode, yeah, okay, it's feeling a little preachy. I get it, you know, so. Well, that's, that's great. Well, that's the heck? difference. Right. So we I'm, I'm going to introduce you to this army guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, we can have a chat. Because he's going to disagree with you. <laughs> uh. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so going into my questions here that I, I uh, had sure. about the show, I, I want to know one thing I've heard is you guys were, oh, you guys mentioned firing the original uh, voice of Xander. Yes. Uh, it was because that was Comedy Central or why did you guys have to do that? That's an interesting thing. All right. So originally the voice of Xander, well, first of all, I just want to say that Chad Plotik, who is Xander, love him in my eyes there's no other xander he fucking nailed it he's the yeah. he's the greatest yeah you know his performance his like realism he brings oh, it's is, amazing. is amazing yeah yeah so but originally it was nat faxon um who's you know he's a big voice guy and he directs movies now he's 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 the shit he won like an oscar <laughs> yeah he won an oscar <laughs> wow. he's yeah he wrote he wrote a well, i forgot what movie he wrote but yeah he wrote a movie <laughs> an oscar 
So he, he's, he's a wildly talented guy, and he was just so funny as Xander. He was brilliant as Xander. Uh, and the network just didn't like him. And we're like, all right, listen, we're going to have a table read. Come to the table read. He's going to play the part of Xander. If it's not funny, it'll be obvious to everybody, and we'll all agree, all right, we need to recast. And so you know, by the way, Matt, in, in that time period when they said no, Nat Faxon, we we auditioned uh, Tom Kenny, oh, who yeah. was very good, but it didn't work. Seth MacFarlane, this was when when Family Guy had been canceled. He came in and took a, his uh, a shot at Xander. It didn't work. Right. So we had we did our job looking for people. We couldn't find anyone, so we decided to bring Nat to the first table read and see if we can convince him. Sorry, go ahead. And and he and it was like this table read was amazing. It just killed. And Nat was a star. He was so funny. Every line had people rolling. So I we ended the table read like, well, this is great. We will this this there's no there's no way we're gonna have a discussion about this. Clearly, he's gonna be Xander. And then the network came into our office and they're like, well, I think it's obvious you guys have to recast Xander. I'm like, wait, what? How are you not at the same table read we were at? They're like, no, he's, he's just not right. We got to get rid of him. And I started losing my mind and I was going to, I actually was going to quit over <laughs> this. I, like, I just, I couldn't believe that they, they, they didn't think he was funny. And on the show, one of our writers who went uncredited is Matt Weiner, the guy who did Mad Men. He's a, uh, yeah, by the way, his lawyer was very clear that we're never supposed to say he worked on the show, but Matt Weiner worked on the show. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> and Matt Weiner, who's a notorious control freak <laughs> and abusive and refuses to take any notes from anybody on Mad Men, pulled me aside and told me I was being ridiculous yeah. and that I needed to let them have a win. He's like, you say you, you, like, you do not take any of their notes. They are not going to budge on this one because you haven't budged on any. He's like, you've got to give them this win. So I figured if Matt Weiner was telling me that, I had to, I had to calm the fuck down. And, uh, and it all worked out because Jack Plotman, who we worked with on this show called Action for Fox, ended up being Xander. And I, I think he's just so brilliant. So and he's I don't think that it was good actor. right, but I think Jack was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's definitely super funny. And But yeah, Jack brought, because he was such a, good actor like we had some really good actors on the show and he brought like a level to xander and we i think we did things with xander we wouldn't have done or at least i'd like to think we wouldn't have done <laughs> wouldn't have. Right. with it a straight actor yeah, yeah with a straight yeah he's actually you know he was he, jack was out i think he was mm -hmm. out at the time he had he had not come out i guess you come out for the press Right. So he was out in his personal life and he you you know there we did an episode what was it episode three where Xander finally came out of the closet. And I think he used that as a time to come out to the press. Wow. Exciting. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's what I I really liked looking back on the show is that, yeah, if you guys had had a stereotypical gay voice constantly like that, you know, the gay voice that people do and uh, for that character, the, you know, archaic type of yeah. thing, it's like it, it would have gotten old, but because he, he was played so realistically, he was always one of the characters that you, you related to the most. You always, yeah. you know, he, he, he felt, he just felt like your friend. He felt like a guy. It just, it, so I, I actually always appreciated that. I thought it was yeah. good, I good representation. Him. Yeah. Yeah. It was great because I do feel as though, like, I do think, like, we got, we have a lot of, like, gay fans. We have a lot of people who got the joke. If you see, like, a lot of straight people were worried that we were making jokes that would offend, you know, well, we got a lot of white people who were worried that we were making jokes that would offend mm -hmm. black people. A lot of, you know, it's always the, always the straight white people that were worried we were going to offend other people. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm sure we did offend some people along the way, but mostly we got, everybody seemed to get the, get the joke. I'll, I'll say, yeah, they, I'll say I've been told that apparently you have a giant following in Latin America. So uh, they've been loving your show on Paramount Plus and that's been getting a big following over there. So they get the joke over there at least. So, it's so great. I, yeah, we heard that too, which is amazing, which is why we almost got to, re to reboot the show. We almost, wow. we, we almost, we did. We wrote a script for the, uh, for a new season and um I guess it didn't go over great, Dave. What what do you think happened? I, I think I think the guy, uh, the, the executive over Paramount Plus is a drawn together fan. It did well in Latin America. I think he would love to reboot the show. That's my interpretation. But right now, Paramount Plus is all about, you know, Yellowstone. That's sort of that's sort yeah. of where and, and like right now every streamer is firing people. Budgets are getting cut. It's and there's a mm -hmm. strike and everyone's put you know, tightening their their belts. So I think we're 
maybe if they start wanting to spend money on animation, we'll have a future, but who knows if that's happening. Yeah. We didn't I mean, convince them to do that <laughs> with our script. But I, I'll send you the script, Bradley. You should read it. See if oh, you like. Oh, my God. Yeah, please. I would love that. Um, and talking yeah. about random pieces of uh, drawn together media that you guys might have. Uh, a pair, did you guys know that the original pilot is considered lost media online? No, you mean like that that really that weird flash thing that yeah, was like people people want to see it. It's considered lost media and it's it's brought up, people talk about it and it's just like, oh yeah, we there's only bits and pieces known of it. So if you oh, guys wow. have a copy of that anywhere and could Do throw that out to me or post that in the public oh, and my have gosh. legally I, in can. I, I would give you a yeah, listen, we'll give you the exclusive if we find it. I have no idea where that would be though. Dave, do you have any clue where it was um it was uh, one of the where like it. Comedy Central gave us like a thousand dollars to make it. We had to put our own money in to get it made, and it's really and the the studio or the animators that did it. That company shut down, right? Long yeah, long. I I don't I have no idea where that lives, but I'd love to see it. It really what what sold it was we had the song, we had some black chick's tongue, we had that song, and the rest of it was terrible. Um, <laughs> we had that montage, I think, to the uh, the. It, it's your birthday the uh no oh, the the party montage yeah we had a party montage i don't think we had the song yet did we i thought we had the song Maybe we that's why... we'll have to look at because i know at one point we weren't even didn't have enough money to to like do a uh to animate the whole thing i'll tell you where we did see it was and this is how uh, you know annoyingly how all tv is made we you write a script you do a short animatic you have people come record you re-record you address notes you do a short animation it goes back and forth with the executives. And then finally, it makes it to some way more important person that doesn't read or barely watch anything. And there was an, a special, was it a CNN special? It was CNN, yeah. And it was talking about the president of MTV Networks at the time, I forget his name, Tom Freston, that might be the name. And it was talking about how he conducts his business. And as B-roll, he's like, yeah, shows are made, they're brought to me. He's sitting in his office, and as the B-roll, he's watching our cl a clip of our shitty animatic <laughs> or presentation. And you see two seconds of it, and you hear him say, oh, an animated reality TV show? Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And that was it. <laughs> like, you that actually is. see the moment that our, our the show went from not being a thing to being a thing. And all the work we had to do and all the people we either pissed off or had to make friends with came down to a guy being like, oh, that sounds okay. <laughs> yeah, like it all came back down to the original one line idea an animated reality TV show. Nothing else matters. Like, oh, yeah, I get that. Let's do that. And we had to do enough work to get it to and that. It, yeah, we had to do all that work to just get that one line to the guy to make the decision. God. <laughs> I got to find that. That's such a funny thing. I didn't, I bet Jordan has it, Dave. We should find out. No, uh, should I send the Zoom link to Jordan? <laughs> yeah, send the Zoom link to Jordan because if he has it, we could. He can actually play it for you live. We oh, that'd be that'd be awesome. I mean, yeah. Hey, if he wants to hop in here, that'd be <laughs> that would always be cool. Uh, yeah, uh, Jordan. Uh, I had a question about him. Oh, by the way, you guys can tell us exactly who he is again. But um, how did you guys meet Jordan? So Jordan Young was an animator on The Simpsons, and he wanted to be a writer. And we had a mutual friend, and he wanted us to meet Jordan. Just he wanted some advice on getting into the into the writing world. And we were about to pitch drawn together and we we're like, well, he's an animator. So we called him up and usually these meetings are just a waste of everybody's time. Right. But we said, Hey, if you want to actually design these characters so we can create a book and maybe an animatic, uh, you know, and if it ever gets made, we'll hire you as a writer. That's probably all of our best shots and thinking this will never work out for either of us, but it did. And he became, he developed the show and an, an executive producer on the show. He's the guy that was almost lit on fire. <laughs> in the writer's room uh but he is an incredibly talented artist and an incredible and he turned out to be an amazing writer and collaborator and crazy person <laughs> oh he's great i, I love jordan but he is crazy he's a uh, like it, it was, so and that was like it was so great about having like guys who hadn't written before on the show because like the ideas came from like weird places one time he came in and he was all depressed we're like jordan what's going on He's like, oh, my dad OD'd on cocaine and he's in a coma. And we're like, oh, shit, well, <laughs> that's great. Let, let's make that part of the show. And then so we had Ling Ling's oh, dad. Oh. 
uh, yeah. the coma. Wow. <laughs> and and that's what why that came from. But like, it was great because like the 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 room was definitely like everybody bared all their secrets. Like there's it was a uh, very open and honest room. And a lot of the great stories, a lot of the great moments came from that. I mean, I guess if you listen to the commentary, we talk about how Dave was molested. Right. I don't know if that came uh, up in the commentary. I was cons- <laughs> to be honest, consensually molested. <laughs> consensually molested. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so Jordan Sorry. designed the characters. Did you guys, had you guys drawn anything of the characters yourself? Or did you guys have ideas for what you wanted to parody? Did you guys give him free reign to create the parodies? Well, we also, we sort of came up with the, them together. Really what it was, was we were like, all right, well, we like, we, we were really big into Big Brother and the real world, all those shows. We loved all those characters. So we wanted to take parts of those characters and see what would mesh best with traditional animated characters. So there was this Mormon girl on the real world who was just so racist because her worldview was so narrow and so small. And we're like, wow, that's kind of like a Disney princess. They're just, they've been trapped in this castle and she had no idea what's appropriate and what's not. And so we were able to connect the dots. We're like, all right, let's make that a Disney princess. And then Jordan went ahead and drew up the initial designs for that. Um, then we also love the, um, there was a, there, a, Captain Hero was based on a uh, docu-series that was on MTV at the time called Real Life. And there was a guy on there who was into bodybuilding and making himself the most, the perfect specimen and he, he spent like yeah. 10 grand on calf implants and that guy was like all right well that guy who should that guy be because he's really obviously a horrible scary superhero we're like oh let's make him like the superman so do you remember that guy, I, that guy was like that the show was about him getting the calf implants because up until then he was like i am the perfect specimen except for my calf uh-huh. like, it was <laughs> he was he was two calves away <laughs> from being perfect and now he finally got the money. And then it, it was really a great special because he was so about good. to become perfect. So, that, <laughs> then, so then we were like, all right, we connected him with superhero. And, so, and then Jordan, and then, you know, we did all that together. Then Jordan would do the designs. And then they brought him over to Rough Draft and uh, got a bunch of their character designers took another pass and refined them. I know Pete Avanzino, our director, he took a pass. Rich Moore, who went on to do Wreck-It Ralph and Zootopia, right. he also did a pass. I think he, and then also, uh, who else was there? Uh, I think Claudia's husband did it too, right? Oh yeah, what, what, the, uh, uh, I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. Know, we had so many who all took passes at different characters when we weren't, they weren't perfect um, or we weren't ready yet to to move forward. And yeah, they, they really refined everything and helped us figure out the, the style and the tone because it is weird. It, it, even though the characters came from, you know, a disgusting internet pig or a Disney princess, we had to find one uniform style for the show, right? Because we had to put them all together. Yeah. And that's where Rough Draft was huge. They sort of helped us figure that all out. The the animation style always stood out to me um, whenever I was younger. And that's what I think is extra fun about the show is how much love and care you can tell goes into the animation and how beautiful it is how much appreciation you guys have for all the different styles of animation there are in the world and then it's just the most raunchy <laughs> disgusting show you're like it does not deserve to look this beautiful but it does <laughs> yeah that's a good that's a good juxtaposition like yeah, yeah. incredible talented artists working on just this fifth grade nonsense which is really fun. Oh, but it, but it was it was seriously funny. I was having tons of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I felt I felt terrible laughing at it, but man, did I have fun rewatching the <laughs> show just now. <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of the point, yeah. Oh, uh, which uh, man, when I when I first watched it, um, I, I think I, I literally think I was in like fifth grade, unfortunately. So that was per- no, that's the perfect age. <laughs> that was that was who we were aiming for. So yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> Um, yeah, creators don't find it funny. No one will. Uh, d- uh, did you guys make the censor for Mickey Mouse out of actual legal fear from Disney, or was that more just to play on the joke of uh, you know companies usually suing over parody? It was a- I think that was a, a legal issue because I remember having a lot of legal conversations, but we were or were not able to do. Okay. Maybe we played into it. I don't. Huh. That's no, because that's what it seemed. You guys played into it so well that you couldn't really tell. 
Boy, I don't, I don't remember. I got to imagine. I, I think they were probably worried about Mickey Mouse yep. suing us way more than Bill Cosby or Brian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was a great episode. That was in the first season. That was an episode where I guess we actually did have social commentary on that one because that was about, you know, erasing these old racist cartoons that are sort of a monument to horrible racism. And if you can't erase your history, these exist. And we shouldn't erase them. We should be like, oh, shit, let, let's. Let's not do that again well, unless it's undrawn together. Well, it's because who was trying to erase it, but the executives that know they like they look bad if they ever produced it and stuff, so they don't want to talk about it. And you're yeah, it's it's very yeah, I know it had this underlying social commentary. And exactly, you go, Oh yeah, there was kind of a commentary. It's because you guys didn't need to beat us over the head with it and have to make sure someone set a line that really yeah. made it yeah, it made it obvious. It was this was fun about it. I, I didn't it didn't always need it, but when it had it, it was like, Oh, hey, hey, you guys you guys exactly. made me think you know, a and little. Now we're one of those cartoons that uh, <laughs> I'm sure many people think should be erased, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, now, yeah. There was a line on that one. Do we want to get into that, Dave? You want to get into the line I'm talking about the spanky line, where he's like, uh, at the end, he's like, um, we had we had a, we had a fight with the censor on this one, where Spanky at the end says something like. Uh, erasing your history is dangerous. It's dangerous. As, oh, denying your history is dangerous. As dangerous as denying the uh, the Holocaust, slavery, or the playful advances of a gym teacher. That was the line, right, Dave? And then the censors were really upset with it. They're like, listen, you can't say the Holocaust. You can't do that. We're like, why can't we? Like, well, because the Holocaust, you can't make a joke about the Holocaust. We're we're saying, well, we're not making a joke about the Holocaust. We're saying it's, uh, it's dangerous to deny the past. It's dangerous to deny that the Holocaust happened. Right. That was, and, the, that was the straight, serious part. That's yeah, what I go, yeah, the playful. Yeah, what are you talking about? So, and then I remember Dave, you're like, wait, wait, well, I go, actually, wait a minute. Wait, why are we allowed to make fun of the Holocaust, but then not... Wait, why Talking are you about Holocaust us, deniers? Yeah, what? Why are you okay with us saying slavery then? You should be upset with us saying... <laughs> yeah, that's... And, and and the censor goes, well, slavery is not as bad as the Holocaust. And we're like, ah! oh. and, then, and then Dave goes, I remember Dave goes, all right, hold on a second. We love working with you. So please don't ever say that again. <laughs> just for your own benefit. <laughs> that's just, that's not something that you ever want to say. Right? What, it, what was any and, of that conversation? Oh. And, then, and, then, and then I remember we had, and it went on and on and we kept arguing why we should do it. And and then uh, I think uh, the sense that she called us from a bathtub. She was in a bathtub having a glass of wine. And she's like, you know what? I thought about it. Fuck it. You guys can say it. <laughs> there you go. That's when you need to talk to a censor person. Yeah, we would talk to them. I remember it would be like two, three in the morning, her time, because they were in New York and we'd be in L.A. And we'd still be fighting. And she's like, I can't believe I'm still fighting with you guys. I can't believe you care at all about this. Yeah. I mean, there, there were a few times where she's like, fine, do it. I, I just can't believe you guys care this much. Fine. <laughs> what, what, what was one of the most unbelievable like scenes or moments that you guys are surprised you actually got greenlit and allowed to do? Or what, what, and what didn't make it that you're like, it was very close that maybe you wanted to get greenlit? Oh, that's a good question. Wow, we had a great scene uh, where Foxy teaches Waldor how to masturbate, yep. which I always appreciate. It was so well animated, and when she actually has an orgasm, there's like a great atomic blast onto Waldor's face that when they animated, it was very, very Looney Tunes, where his face, you know, sort of yeah, went in the wind like a dog's head out of the car, mm -hmm. all because of her atomic-sized orgasm. Um that's amazing. I, I think when I watch it, almost I can't now with my analysis perspective, I can't believe any of it got on the air. <laughs> At the time, I remember thinking, why not? Like, yes, we should get this on the air. Like, we did a thing at Comic Con called Censored or Uncensored, and we would we would play quote, we would show on a screen quotes from the show, and the audience would have to guess was it censored or uncensored, and. I was like, you're never going to guess because it's so hard to determine what should be on the air and what shouldn't. But the audience 100% knew what was appropriate to be on TV <laughs> and what wasn't appropriate. And I was really surprised because uh, that was beyond me. I really thought, I thought everything should be on TV. <laughs> um, so, I'm trying to think. It's funny when you say, what didn't we get on the air? And I, I can't think of anything 
that we really didn't get on the air. Like Matt said, not using Matt Faxon, which turned out to be a. Uh, I think I think we won. I mean, we what we would do is we'd get the notes from the censors, and then if we didn't like if we didn't have a way to defend what we were doing, we would erase the note and then paste it back into the email. So we just made the notes disappear. <laughs> there was um, the the uh, episode where Captain Hero ends up in a wheelchair. In that episode, that was a big, long, drawn out fight because they didn't want to make fun of Christopher Reeves ending up in a wheelchair. That's why in the episode, the I guess the compromise was the the horse sort of rearing up and Captain Hero gently sliding off into a wheelchair. Yeah. So there was no, that's why that was the way it was, as opposed to, I'm sure what we wanted was a more realistic <laughs> fall on the ground, family guy style, broken neck. Um, Yet even though South Park then also is allowed to make a whole Christopher, they had like a whole episode parodying the Christopher Reeves thing where he's oh, did they? drinking stem cells and it allows yeah. him to become super strong and he ends up becoming Superman and then the villain from the Gene Hackman, he's calling it like he's a super villain. Like they do a whole episode about it. It's again, they're like, oh, well, they're, they're South Park. They're allowed to. So yeah, yeah. no, our episode on. was banned. Like it was supposed to be the first season. It was banned for a while <laughs> because and he died, it, right? Oh, that's right. That's right. He died. Yeah, he died like a week before it was gonna air. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else didn't we weren't we able to put on? We weren't able to. I think we did everything, Dave. I really don't think I. What was it? There was no big. There was one shot of Xander when he really mutilated his penis with a bunch of piercings and and low <laughs> whatever he did. That's we right. had to. <laughs> it was so graphic that we had to blur it and then put a black box over the blur. <laughs> There you go. That'll. <laughs> I think we were we were obviously fine with because it seems so dumb. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's actually Here's... funny that we had to do that. <laughs> Another weird the other thing that was great was um, a lot of the scenes, when the naked scenes, we never drew the genitalia. There were there were no penis or anything because there's no point in drawing it because we could, so we just because we we're just gonna blur it anyway. Yeah, so we were just blur coming out on DVD. We had we were doing an uncensored version, so we had to send it back to the animators uh, to draw all the dicks and the vaginas and the boobies, <laughs> which is fun to think of the the day the they got the mail, what their job was that day. <laughs> draw a bunch of that, that animator is like, this is going to be a good weekend. And uh... <laughs> I know we had a lot of fights over to cutting herself was a big conversation. Oh, yeah. another weird censorship issue was there's an episode where where Spanky teaches Clara how to prank and pull pranks on the pizza man, yeah. right? And it was a whole uh, Dirty Dancing parody with the I Had the Time of My Life song. And during the I Had the Time of My Life, they dance, he holds her up, does the big lift, and then he holds her over a pizza where she shits on the pizza. They give it back to the pizza man waiting at the door and they say, we didn't order this with sausage. Mm -hmm. And they laugh and she finally learns how to loosen up and have fun and pull pranks. And, you know, you have to call... The people who own the rights to uh, I had the time of my life. They signed off. It got on the air. But I guess Bill Medley is the guy who actually composed it. He's not the guy you contact. He's just, he must have been uh, sitting in his living room one night wondering what's on TV and saw that scene and got incredibly <laughs> upset and pissed off and called the people who owned it. And they called Comedy Central and they made us take out the song. So in any repeat viewing that we, we wrote a parody song about how the original song would have been there but bill medley saw it and made us take it down <laughs> oh that's yeah i know it's always a that's that's a common problem with adult animation of transferring um to dvd is getting the original licensed yeah. uh, songs on there like a i know like the daria dvd for instance they've they've they used a bunch of original music and they couldn't like put any of the songs because it was like an MTV cartoon on the DVD. And so the DVDs. Oh, right. But you guys, but no, I love that you guys again could play into it and just make a full joke around it. That's... We, yeah. It was such a, it was such a fun show. I'm so bummed we're not making more. Are, are, are you guys musical? You guys are musical fans? Dave, you're a big fan of musicals. Dave, a big, I mean, we're both musical, like we are uh, the South Park music we love. Uh, I definitely spent more time in broad at Broadway watching all the lay misses and catses of the world more than any young man should have at that time. Um, yeah, we had Evan Schletter who had worked on Mr. Show, came and worked on our show, 
and he was amazing. Like all the La 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 Labia songs, we would just give him a basic premise and then pitch on some lines, but ultimately he would write and compose the vast majority of it. Did you guys, so you guys didn't, did you guys like always know that you wanted to incorporate like music into it? Cause yeah, I always felt that to be a pretty standout part of the show. Yeah. Well, we knew cause it was such a big part of the genres that we were parroting, you know, it was such a big part okay. of Disney, such a big part of Josie, the Pussycats. Sure, yeah. So yeah, it just felt like a natural fit. And uh, yeah, the songs just cracked us up. They just, with the song, I love the songs. I love the, the two to the nursing home one was amazing. Mm -hmm. La La Labia is great. No, I've literally had La La La, La Labia stuck in my head. Oh, it's ever yeah. since I've heard it. I've I've just been. There, there's a woman. It. This is a weird story, but there's a woman who, uh, man, I introduced you to her. I have a uh, old man Jewish bag problems, and she's like physical therapist masseuse, like one of those very painful masseuses. And I've known her for twelve years. I introduced her to Matt's wife, and just three days ago, she texted me just octopus question mark. And I guess we never talked about drawing together. She doesn't never heard of drawing. We never had that conversation. And I guess somehow in watching, finding that show, seeing my name on it, she's like, octopus <laughs> I don't know if that means she liked it. She didn't like that episode. Yeah, I don't know. But you have to get more information. That's straight. I'll get more information. Octopus The octopus was, I think that was named by Standards and Practices, right? Yes. That's Our how we got them on board with the episode. Right, because they, they, they didn't like, I forgot what we originally called the vagina, but, they, but we must have called it something more vulgar than octopus -wah. And I remember she, we were on the phone with her forever, and she's like, can you please just call it something else? Can you just, can you just call it like octopus -wah? And we're like, yes, we can. We'll go with that. So yeah, she named it. Our, our sensor named that. And that's funny because it just it worked so much more for yeah, Clara's character of just being such a prissy princess. It just sounds yes. like what she would call it. It would be some fancy it name. It was perfect. Right? Yeah. I hey, listen, we had a lot of arguments with the censors, but banded. I, I love those conversations. They were really they actually were really funny too. <laughs> and uh, you know, the fact that they let us get away with all that stuff is pretty remarkable. They really wanted the show to be funny, but they also didn't want to get fired. Um <laughs> Actually, right before the show got picked up, David and I sent them a spa package hmm. and uh, and uh, with a little note that said, we can't wait to S&P all over you. <laughs> I think it said, I can't wait to let you S&P all over us. I oh, is that what it was? That's probably, that's the better joke. Yeah, and more <laughs> it was just a little You would never be so out. aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they were great. Uh, and, and then... Um, I'm sure I'm sure I know the answer to this, but uh, no, none of the voice actors ever had any problems with saying any of the lines or anything. You know, they they seem like they very much enjoyed enjoyed it, had a great time, and knew what they were getting into. But... Almost everybody had throughout the season. Everybody had one line they wouldn't say. Yeah, there was one area for was Cree, except for Cree. Oh, ha! Foxy would say <laughs> anything, didn't give a shit. She was a game. They were all game, but everybody drew the line somewhere. Like Jess didn't like to do any jokes about Satan, who was he was Captain Hero. No, he did not no. want to do. He said it's, it freaks him out. No jokes about Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if if Tara had any. Lines. Yeah, I I don't remember. I remember saying that before. I remember saying that everybody but Cree, but I don't remember Tara. I remember Adam Carolla didn't want to do a nine eleven reference. Um. Jack, uh, rightfully so, was cautious about uh, making fun of the AIDS epidemic. Sure. Which seemed reasonable. You know, James Arnold Taylor uh, was a Christian and was cautious about... James Arnold Taylor is an amazing guy because he really... Um, you know, he's definitely more conservative than we are. He's the guy who did Waldor, mm -hmm. and it's not usually what he does. Um, but, man, he, he, he did... I, I don't think he felt good about himself, but he did it. <laughs> Yeah, he was a real professional because you could tell some of it, like Cree and Tara and Jess, who've been in the kids' world forever, just had fun breaking out and doing their own thing, you know, doing an adult thing for the first time. Actually, there were times where Tara came in with some ad libs that we couldn't use. Cause oh, yeah. Oh, she was filthy. She was filthy. <laughs> James, I don't think, had as much fun doing an adult comedy, but was so talented and such a professional that he wanted to do a good job and did a great job. Yeah. I mean, he, oh, he's such a great performer. His Waldor was is just brilliant. It's such Ever a good performance. Jew producer. And Jew producer, <laughs> yep. right. He was willing to be the Jew producer. <laughs> God bless him. I I, I know I, I I loved it. I heard him, 
I, I think you guys said this in another interview or on commentary or something. You guys mentioned that you uh, you wanted to get established voice actors like you know Tara Strong, Jess Arnell, all of them because you wanted some of these characters to feel like already watched cartoons characters we already knew. I thought that was such a just brilliant direction. I know I never noticed that before but i'm like wow yes that's why that is why they work so well is because it's tara strong and Cree summer and just all these recognizable voices i just want to say it's just a great great idea on your part it's the same as finding a real animation company to do really strong animation it's just going to be funnier when a character that looks like a disney princess who sounds like a disney princess who moves like a disney disney princess shits on a pizza <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, I wanted to say, uh, funny enough, I didn't did not mean to do this, but I'm wearing a pizza shirt with a little brown thing. It kind of looks like I've got oh yeah, that a pizza looks like with the... a shit on it. It's yeah. <laughs> it's there perfect. was uh, someone said this in a, a newspaper article back after the show had aired, and yeah, a, a it was a cheerleader camp. It was about a cheerleader cheerleading camp, and a one squad had been kicked out of cheerleading camp somewhere in Texas because they pulled a prank by defecating on a pizza now we have no proof that that was based on our show but i i feel very confident that that, that we <laughs> we had a strong effect on cheerleading camp that and, and th that's actually <laughs> did, did we reach out to that or we wanted we uh, the lawyers wouldn't let us but we wanted to have them come and do dvd commentary on that episode yeah yes yeah. yeah we weren't allowed to do that and that by the way was based on right Matt, that was based on a, a jackass prank yeah jackass did they they shit yeah they, they're very the pilot jackass they they went to a diner took a shit on a plate with eggs and then said hey i don't remember ordering these eggs with sausage <laughs> and then they ran out and they <laughs> uh I, I i love that i love that episode funny enough just because of yeah exactly that, that whole that whole joke just sounds so juvenile and stupid and i just love the extent that you guys take it it turns into this whole just it's, they're they're role playing and it's just like what what is this turned into and it's all just for a joke about a prank about shitting on a pizza, got a pizza. yeah it was great <laughs> god it was a fun show yeah it was it it really was um, so guess, your question was what happened to it so yeah of course i mean yeah that's the that's the overall question about what, overall what did question, happen to it happened. Well, you know what? Maybe what happened was it stopped, but obviously it continues to bring people joy and bring people together, especially in the Latin America. Yeah, in the in the pi in the new reboot pilot, in a nod to our Latin American fans, uh, Princess Clara. It takes place now. It's like a drawn together reunion, like those, like the like the real you know the uh, real world reunions that they're doing yeah so they're all getting back together and obviously the characters hope it spawns a new reboot of the show just like we do but you find out what's been happening in everybody's life and everybody's world since they left the show and princess clara has gone back to her fairy tale disney-esque world and it's become a multicultural paradise like you know all the mm -hmm. disney movies and disney disney yeah, shows it's yeah. been very uncomfortable and as a, you know, just a plain old white woman, she's been sort of uh, become an outcast. So to stay relevant and to stay popular, she's gotten engaged to a Latin American prince who's called Prince Pinata, sort of as an homage to Coco and Encanto. Uh, and he's a Pinata, musical Pinata prince who she's going to marry. There's a lot of jokes about, get, you know, them having sex and getting candy in her hair, <laughs> which is really half the reason. And then... But then she then she gets pregnant by this is my favorite part. But she she gets pregnant by the pinata. So she has a and pinata. She wanna, and she doesn't want to have the baby because she's in love with Foxy, as we find out. And and so she wants to have an abortion. So you know the only way you can uh, abort a woman who's been pregnant pregnant by a pinata is they put her up on a string and all the doctors come out with bats. And, uh -huh. <laughs> and try to so yeah, so she tries to have a a, a pinata baby abortion and it doesn't go well. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I can see why there are a lot of people like, standing yeah, we're around. Not, we're not doing this. <laughs> There's a lot of people yeah, standing. They're around not doing right. any more animation. That's the reason they're not doing the pinata abortion yeah. show. <laughs> That's the only reason to do adult animation is to have a pinata baby abortion scene. That's <laughs> why. I mean, if you've seen the the 
the animations that are popular on YouTube, there's some pretty vulgar and crass stuff and yes. grotesque stuff on there that gets millions of views that people adore. So it's also like it's it's always funny that cable wants to lean out of it, and then you they wonder why everyone's leaning to the internet and streaming and unplugging from yeah. the cable network so much. And it's like, yeah, what are the adult what adult animation exists right now? There's the, the Lonely Planet guys are doing the show on Comedy Central. Uh, yeah, um, there's the, the Rick and Morty and Solar Opposites, really. And Rick and Morty and Solar Opposites. Uh, right? There's there's some adult swim shows that got like uh, the Harvey. What is it, Bird Girl? They brought that one. Oh, right. back. Oh, did they bring that back? Yeah, um, Twelve Ounce Mouse. I think they brought back. Uh, they're 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 still doing a little bit over there, uh, but and then there's just like always like the one season things that'll pop up on on different platforms. I guess Velma got renewed for a second season no yeah i know it, 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 it picked up the second one before even before, the before anybody done. saw it because that's a piece of shit it, it got hate watched it got so, so many people wanted to watch it to hate on it that the yeah. network is like oh they must like it might as well keep watch, making them yeah and then, no, then there's clone fan. high it got revived and that's oh, where that's right. it, and that's where we're hoping you guys can uh hopefully that does well because it can mean other shows will get revived sure. too yeah that would be great because I want the world to see the uh, pinata abortion scene. Oh, the, the <laughs> other the other storyline, Bradley, which is yeah, like yeah, Ling the Ling other plot. Story. The other the other storyline is Ling Ling, you know, our Asian uh, Pokemon character, uh, is voiced by a very talented actress, Abby McBride, who's a white woman. And and since then, you know, Cleveland got fired. The the actor who portrayed Cleveland, Apu, and a lot of. Uh, Diverse characters voiced by white people have been dropped for you know a lot of reasons, and it's about Ling Ling having her her mouth sewn up and locked because you can't have an Asian character voiced by a white woman, uh -huh. and she gets or Ling Ling gets thrown in jail with Cleveland with Missy from <laughs> Big Mouth with Epu, and all their voices are like <laughs> zippered shut and padlocked because. Kind of like in that erasement episode. You're yeah. You're not allowed to do that anymore. And, and they, they all break great. out trying to get their voices back. Uh, uh, it's so fun. It's so fun. I hope we get to do this thing somehow. So, I don't know that we're saying anything outside of we're keeping the, char the characters because they were living in the world. They, you know, they read the Entertainment Weekly review in one episode. So that what would they be doing now? It seemed like we can still be insane and dumb and sophomoric and, and offensive. But at least acknowledge that right now it's harder to do that. I mean, yeah, right. that's yeah. You guys can, yeah. I mean, always lean into that. I mean, and I mean that's again sort of the point of the crafts comedy is you're not really looking to these characters like they're who I'm copying and they're who I'm looking up to. They're supposed to be terrible people doing terrible things, and it's so insane as to what they're doing. So, you know, it's where it's like that's where the humor comes from. It's that it's insane, and that you guys go there, uh, which I feel like is what. Is kind of, is missing from a lot of shows. I mean, not completely, but that's what's weird is you have shows like South Park and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia that are wildly popular and get a million seasons, and they just do the really vulgar, terrible things that they don't let anyone else do it though, and they're like, ah, it's not going to be popular. Okay. If we were more successful, we probably would have been allowed to do more. We just weren't successful enough to do the kind of thing we were doing. Yes, we one some one thing had to change. Either we had to be less of the giant babies that we were to do everything we wanted to do. <laughs> or if we were more successful, we could have been even bigger babies. Yeah. And that's like why you guys had to kind of change the animation style for the movie was just lower budget and everything. So we had no money and yeah. Yeah, we should have done it with rough draft because they I mean they they knew the show and they knew how to do it right. And we it, you can't really I mean hard to be like hey we're gonna do this for half the amount in just one episode mm -hmm. yeah that was a that was a that was a bad call the movie was a bad call we we rushed it we did it with a different animation company it was just uh it was like a desperate attempt to try to get the show back uh and it, and it failed yeah yeah it's unfortunate um yeah the movie wasn't wasn't perfect it's 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 kind of like it's hated on a lot by the fandom it seems i i didn't even know it existed like until like about a month ago so i mean i upon watching it i i didn't mind it completely i i thought it had some funny moments so um it's it has moments yeah it's just, not, it's just not good it was not how that's not it was the it was the crystal skull 
of drawing together. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's <laughs> that's a pretty I damn good way to put either. it. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of either of those, in fact. <laughs> uh, and then, so the movie was not like the plan next step. Yeah, no, was... weirdly, it was actually right. Like it was just like now there was a writer strike, and oh yeah, oh yeah, it was there right was when there was a writer strike, strike, and we had no money. It really was like, well, oh, we gotta quickly come up with something, and and they came to us and hey, want to do a direct to DVD movie? And we're like, sure, and we, it was it was it was a rush job, and it was done. It was just not done right. Was it just you guys? Yeah, it was. Just, it was just us guys, us unfortunately, and then we brought in a few of the writers we could to do some punch up on it. Oh. And, and do some work on it but it was um it came from the wrong place we weren't doing it because we loved it like we did for the series we did it because we we needed some money after the strike of course of course no <laughs> and, I and we, did it. we were hoping it would help bring the show back but, but i think uh, like anything when matt and i were were i guess paramount sort of was asking or at one point comedy central was asking if we would ever want to do a drawn together reboot and matt and i got together and we're like i don't know if we want to Let's see if we come up with an idea. And then as soon as we thought about a pinata abortion, <laughs> we're like, all right, now that we have something that we know we would laugh at, <laughs> let's build around that. I think for the movie, there was never an idea until we're like, all right, if we want it, we need it for this day, get going. And when you start with that, when you don't start with an idea and you just start with, we need money, at least drawn together, <laughs> if we do it again, we do need the money, but also we have some ideas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a uh it can, i guess i could see that in yeah in retrospect of the movie because you guys have the whole thing with make a point land but it takes like a good while to get to <laughs> get to there uh and i i know you guys even do that in the dvd commentary yeah. part of the movie you guys are like this thing's still going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i we love that on the movie while we're making it right <laughs> not, not like, a good a good thing. sign <laughs> well you know when we did the original show it was weird like when we when we pitched drawn together showtime wanted to do it and they offered us more money than we had ever gotten paid mm. and maybe still have ever gotten paid and then comedy central also offered us to do it for a thousand dollars and that would have to cover the cost of the pilot so we'd actually have to put our own money in and we were like uh. well fuck, do we go to showtime where we can actually make real money or do we go to the place where it belongs it belongs on comedy central it belongs, you know, hopefully paired with South Park. We're like, that's where we saw it. We didn't see it on Showtime. And so we we didn't let money dictate our choices at that point. And I think that's why. And then this was, it was just a show that was purely a passion project. and something we loved and wanted to do right. And I think that's reflected in the show. The movie was something that we did just because we needed the money and didn't seem to, couldn't really worry about the animation style and it's a it's a good lesson for you kids out there if you're lucky enough to not worry to not have money dictate your creative choices please don't because yeah. uh, make make your most important career and creative choices before you have children because yeah. once the kid comes out you're like i just need to pay for diapers yeah man trey never had kids i don't think they had kids or maybe they just started having kids i now. think they did but yeah they, they was certainly after yeah it was already yeah Mm -hmm. no, you don't don't have kids until you're <laughs> successful <laughs> all right and one one thing you guys also mentioned is with season three you guys said uh you guys didn't spend as much time writing that because you guys got like an xbox or what is it uh in, in the writer's room was that is that halo. actually true is that a 100 percent true we had it was the first i mean halo was the first right multiplayer game where you could hook it up to multiple TVs. <laughs> three different offices all wired together for a halo it did become a bit of a an obsession uh it was so we, bad we think right, that's, that's the other takeaway don't 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 <laughs> put the money and also don't play video games when you should be writing the show although you know dan Harmon supposedly during rick and morty you know our our dearly beloved friend mike mandel who produced drawn together and then he produced rick and morty he, he passed away a few years ago an amazing producer, an amazing guy. He said, you know, Dan Harmon would be playing Minecraft. And that was his escape at the time. And he couldn't, he wouldn't or couldn't or wasn't finishing scripts because he was too busy obsessing over his Minecraft world. So I'd like to think uh, it, that's not the reason the show failed as much as 
Viacom was not a big fan of <laughs> our brand of humor. I think you're right, Matt. Mixed with our brand of profit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's I, I, I can agree with you on that just because as as a objective fan, uh, there was people that were saying like, oh yeah, season three isn't isn't as good as the other seasons. And when I, I when I was watching it, I like rewatching the show, I was already like halfway through it and I'm like, Oh, I'm already in season three. I don't know. It hasn't felt much different. And then I realized I, I clipped, I posted a clip for Pride Month, and it was from your show. Um, it was when Waldor's doing his uh, public access show, uh, and Clara oh, yeah. barges in and says, "What you know? What's what in the name of one dimensional characters going on here?" He says, "I'm doing a show about <laughs> equality and love." And he goes, "That's that can, will breed homosexuality and you know, the lightning strikes and all that." I just thought, "Wow, this is aged." This is unfortunately aged perfectly. It was my yeah, right? my joke, and I'm like, it was so great. And I was like, that was a little bit of from season three, and I'm like, no, nah, the writing's still just pretty on point here. So it is amazing. Yeah, I, I, we really, I think we sort of pre approached a lot of that. A lot of those jokes were funny to us because because we thought we we thought all that shit was over. We thought people were yeah cool with everything, and so it was funny. Like, oh wait, oh no, you guys, everyone's still people are still hating on gay people. Like, really? And right. it's yeah, the, that was a lot of. There, she was very worried about Nazis riding on dinosaurs, right? That's <laughs> right. Yeah, if gays marry, Nazis will ride on dinosaurs. Yeah. And then that happened. They got married, and we saw it yeah. happen. She was right. <laughs> and that's the joke. Is that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, what if they're yeah, all their <laughs> oh my crazy God, they're thoughts? Right. <laughs> oh no, they have a point. <laughs> uh, and the, oh, and that's the other totally ironic thing that I learned reading was that you guys after your the movie came out you guys got called anti-semitic and you guys were like um yeah we're Jewish but <laughs> all right yeah I, we're both, I mean Dave is very Jewish like profound Dave you're so he's so Jewy oh I'm very Jewish I actually find found like uh I have some friends some very right-wing Zionistic well more family friends who were not happy with the movie and I remember sort of it was through my brother at the time who was like yeah eric's not real happy with that movie like what the fuck are you doing i'm like well i mean at the end the robot just says i just want to live in peace that's the only reason i'm so <laughs> and it was, became clear that the person didn't really watch the movie uh -huh. they were just upset in at reading these articles and you read and then i think that's you know obviously a little bit magnified now but people read little snippets and little articles that that are already upset and they get upset with you. It's like, well, if you watch the movie, it's actually very pro-Israel, <laughs> which I know upsets Matt more than the people. Really, yeah, I'm furious about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what's really funny too. Is I mean, it is kind of just taken. I mean, yeah, you take jabs at it, and then, like you say, in the end, technically, it comes back around to be positive. So it's it's one of those things where you could be laughing at it or with it. Um, you guys yeah. kind of just punch at everybody though you guys don't hold back and say well we can't make fun of this we can't make fun of that that's what's so fun about drawn together is we never knew what you guys were going to say next because you could literally go anywhere with that show we did it but it always came from a place of love yeah i know i know i mean it did that's what you hear like the voice actors say is they're like yeah i mean yeah we got to be so risque and finally like we got to laugh at it though yeah it was like we're like summary it's like yeah i know i'm i'm being like a terrible stereotype caricature in this episode but that's the point is i get to laugh at it now and yeah. i know it's not making a joke at my expense yeah i wish more people got that mm -hmm. <laughs> yep i'm glad you got that that's what's funny is it's like you got it's like it could call it it gets called low brow but it's like it seems like people that with the lower intelligence aren't understanding what comedy even is so yeah I mean, people are too stupid to understand this stupid show. <laughs> we thought we had made it. stupid proof, but we failed. Oh no! <laughs> uh, would you guys would you guys create any new characters if you guys did a revival? Were there is there any like new new characters you'd want to introduce? Was there anyone new in the there's aside from like Pinata, Prince well, Pinata, 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 Prince Pinata would would was might could be in it for sure. Uh, I know that Paramount Plus at, definitely wanted to have some new characters, but we went through the animation styles. And I mean, Wuldor sort of covered both SpongeBob and Looney Tune world. So that mm -hmm. at one point we thought maybe there'd be a Looney Tune character. But animation wise, if you think about it, we with all the genres. animation, 
Yeah, with all the new, there's not really a new genre. Rick and Morty is sort of still in that between Family Guy and South Park and Solar Opposites is an offshoot of that. So mm -hmm. genre-wise, adult animation is covered. Kid animation is sort of all offshoots of- 3D yeah, animation? You could always do some 3D oh, yeah, three. animation. Yeah, but we can't afford that, unfortunately. Right, yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> yeah, just even more crazy, exactly. We did, though, we did have, there is a multiverse Captain Hero uh, in, the, in the new one because uh, multiverse is, is such a big deal. Yes. But the multiverse Captain Hero, he's actually just a homeless guy who dresses up as Captain Hero in front of the Chinese theater, forcing people to take pictures with him. <laughs> he's just an aggressive, he's just one of those aggressive guys. Yeah, I think I, I think you're right. The CGI or like Disney, they're doing all live action versions of anime. Oh my God, that's right. That's what we should do. We got to do the live action version of Princess Clara. <laughs> Or just find another sort of Disney character that just comes in as live action. <laughs> our, our own movie. Uh, Clara finding out that they've recast, they're doing a live action version of her with a black princess would blow, Would that would be great. Oh, oh wow. God. Yeah, that could, that could be fun. Yeah, she would lose her mind. Right. That, that's, that, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's actually really fun. Exactly. And there's just already fun social commentary. Yeah. Yet no need for there to be. It's just there without needing to be. I, it's so fun. That's great about your show too, is it just goes wild and you guys can just pull any idea out of, really out of anything. Yeah, it's such a fun world to play in. Uh, you guys mentioned on a DVD too having merch. Did you guys ever have merch planned and that you guys didn't get to throw out? We did have merch. Dave, you want to tell the quick story of, the, of our merch? I think it was on the DVD commentary, but that one episode, the Lost in Parking Space, was originally based on on our merchandising where i think it was after season one there was a big exciting day where merchandise was coming out and it was going to be a hot topic which we thought was really cool and we all the writers it was like lunchtime like all right the mall is open let's all we all left work <laughs> went down the hot topic excited and, and in our heads it was gonna be like hot topic pull and draw together <laughs> and there would be t-shirts and people would just be going around putting on foxy hats and, and dressing up in Waldor uh, sock bat noses. <laughs> and we came in, there was nothing quite in the front. We're like, all right, they haven't made it in the front display yet. And we looked and then people are looking around, there's no t-shirts anywhere. And then we finally went to the person at the counter and said, hey, did you guys get the, the drawn together merchandise? They had never heard of the show, never heard of the merchandise. And they're like, I think we just got some new boxes of stuff in the back. So we uh, now there's like eight writers and us going into the back room at Hot Topic with <laughs> papers and boxes. And we opened a box and at the bottom of the box, there was like three Ling Ling t-shirts. It really was. We, and I remember being like, hey, we did it. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the ep, in the show, if you watch that episode, I think that's what happens to Foxy. And then she gets knocked out and mm. is hostile uh, down in the basement of, of Hot Topic. But yeah, that was that was our big merchandising event, and then we tried to make a musical soundtrack. Didn't we have a, mu a soundtrack? Oh, I, think that, I think that actually might have come out. I think they actually did do a soundtrack. I think. I yeah, this was before. I, uh, I mean, it was before. I guess iTunes. So I don't remember how they sold it. I guess the, the key to merch is you, people have to want to buy it. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, the there's demand the meeting of the want. And the availability, and we never really did either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know it's it's, uh, it's so sad it came out in that like cable era because now with the internet, people want merch so bad. Like people, like you get the hardcore fans really wanting to buy stuff. But yeah, back then it seemed like we took shows for granted and properties. It was like ah, whatever, it's a cartoon. Oh, uh, but no, I feel having like figures of the characters would have been so cool. That sort of thing, just getting into all that would have. Like said, a foxy yeah. hat that would have been awesome. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. And, uh, totally, totally never gonna have a reboot if uh, executives are listening. Um, did you guys know? Uh, this is a funny one. I I, I just got made aware of this by I, I posted on my YouTube asking for people to throw up questions. So some of these questions have been submitted by people. Um, there's an anime called Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt, and apparently the creator has literally like named your show as inspiration. Yeah, I read that recently. It's uh, that was so flattering because I the thing that we inspired anything is amazing. And yeah, besides, I mean, 
inspire something kind of great. Uh, <laughs> fucking, that's huge. Yeah, that was really nice. Yeah, uh, I thought, I thought you know that, that Dave? Awesome. Did you see that? Or did I, I, thought maybe I, I did not see that. I was going to say the only thing we inspired were cheerleaders getting kicked out of cheerleading. <laughs> 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 but then we actually inspired art and and some yeah. Of the yeah, wildly popular anime. No, it's it's like super popular. Um, and yeah, it's comedic and everything. And they just said, yeah, we were inspired by like wild American adult animations, like drawn together. <laughs> it was like the one he named. It was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Wanted to know so, that. That was very cool. That's really flattering. Yeah. Amazing to think that at least something good came out of all this. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. Um, I just, uh, we'll leave on this one. Uh, let's go with favorite and least favorite episodes of Drawn Together. What would you guys have to say about that? Well, I'll say, right, my, fa my favorite, oh, it's hard to choose. Also. I, I love so many of them. I love, I love Alzheimer's that ends well. Um, uh, I love the Erasement Camp episode. I love Lost in Parking Space 1. The first one I think is really great, the first part. Um, but I think the, the the greatest episode is the after school special one where they do the role playing, where Xander wants to come out nope, and they no. do the role yeah. playing yeah. and they get stuck in role playing for the entire episode. That's like my favorite. That was just, that one came out perfect. I love that episode so much. Dave, what about you? I'm I think I, I probably have the same answers as Matt. I love that role-playing one. I think the Alzheimer's one is one of my favorite. And it's also a Rich Moore special. Uh, and that also maybe maybe one of my favorites that you didn't mention was Clum Babies. Clum Babies. Yeah, which was also course. a Rich Moore special uh, where we had a big John Woo gun, which I don't think you could do now because there was a, a people are a little more sensitive about, about gun violence than they used to be. But it was a religious gun uh attack that rich moore just killed i thought was amazing um yeah and i think lost in parking space that first one was amazing because it was also based in something real and and uh amazing yeah. cliffhangers that i don't know if lost in parking space 2 really <laughs> so i'm gonna say my least favorite is lost in parking space 2 because the first one i thought was so amazing and uh we did we, we didn't we didn't nail the second half although still i think a funny episode but that'll be my least favorite because we didn't we and, didn't nail the second half now my least favorite's the movie <laughs> that's that that's fair that's pretty uh easy we did we did a clip show did we do a clip show i'm trying to remember now. yeah i mean the season two finale and is like the clip showy one and then the season three finale is like the, the ryan seacrest Oh, that's the that's what we did the Brian Dunkelman thing. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, we do the line. I'm not a Dunkel man, yep. I'm a Dunkel boy. <laughs> what was funny is I think that was actually one of the first episodes. I think I saw the the hot topic episode first, and then like one of the second ones I saw was the season three finale. So not only as a kid was I like, I mean, it's great because it showed me all these different clips in the show, and I'm like, I want to see this now. I want to because I could tell what oh, it was. Good. So I understood, yeah. okay, they're showing things that happened, and this is so funny. They're being so meta about this. But I remember going like, I can't wait to get a new season of this when it comes out. Yeah, and then, and then just being like, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's that? More of that show coming out? Um, yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I really liked uh, uh, Foxy Foxy Brown versus the Board of Education. That one. Oh, that was great. That uh, was a great. That had a great musical number in there, also. Yeah, that one's that one's fantastic. That was great, and that's when we had the uh, the Star Wars creature, the guy dry humping it when it died. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, the uh, glass of that episode. Uh, I think I always thought. Oh, one random thing that I thought was funny was a. Uh, Spanky Ham, I always thought it was supposed to be Porky Pig growing up. Um, wh what internet like image was it supposed to be based off of? Because um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I get that it's like an internet an internet character now, like it's supposed to be like a clip art type thing. Yeah, there was not a specific one, but at the time when we were drawn together, was there was like a whole bunch of Flash cartoons that were online, and they were all just super crude of just hand-drawn characters taking shits and pissing and jerking off and that's all they that's all they were there's a lot of yeah there was a lot of like very uh funny sort of racist caricatures I'm trying to remember the asian caricature that we saw oh we were... that's, that's right that was a terrible one mr uh, yeah i forgot but there, there was a lot of that crap no uh, I, I literally know what you i know exactly what you mean that's the yeah it's the type of internet 
uh, yeah, early internet like, content just, we all like, grew up with. with I, it was garbage, but it was funny, but it was garbage. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's kind of what it was. So it wasn't anything specific, but it was it was that duty.com type character. Oh, yeah. Remember duty.com? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious that's i'm gonna look that up real quick <laughs> you're like no i gotta go hold on i gotta go watch some duty.com duty <laughs> is it still around uh no it goes right take me right to duty enterprises oh, <laughs> man. unique targeted uh uh strategy strategy marketing company oh wow well we like duty.com but that's all he, that's all he was so he wasn't porky pig <laughs> Oh was. yeah, well yeah, no, because obviously Waldor was supposed to be the yeah Waldor sort of crossed over to that. and and all that. So yeah. and no, yeah, that's why I was a stupid kid. I was like, well yeah, he looks way too basic to have been Porky Pig. I don't know what I was thinking, but <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying I was just a dumb kid watching it. Dumb but <laughs> um, uh, no, yeah, I just wanted to know if there was any specific inspirations. But I feel like you guys have answered a lot of my questions pretty uh, pretty confidently on that. Um, Great. Yeah, uh, I guess you guys had no hard feelings for you on the South Park guys, right? With Because uh, I know the movie had like a lot of jabs at it. But like we said, well, you kind of roast the ones you love. Yeah, listen, South Park is the better show. What are you going to do? You know? <laughs> yeah, it also came, I mean, the spirit of Christmas came out when Matt and I were living in New York. And I was like, oh, my God, that's that's fucking funny. And that, I was working at like Prudential at the time. I'm like, I'd much rather try to do that than try to like help people with their 401k <laughs> insurance so it's certainly an inspiration for us a hundred percent uh you know well i wish we weren't we were as successful as them well it's not even like south park but I, it's like i always appreciated about your show was like because i mean other other reviewers kind of take it as like oh you guys are taking jabs they're bitter and i'm like no they're not you guys have like literally a joke in your show is about king of the hill near the very end about being king of the hill boring and some you're calling it boring <laughs> And then right after drawn together, you guys go and work with Mike Judge. It's like, oh yes, because I'm sure they think Mike Judge is a ter- is a boring, terrible writer. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. we love Mike Judge. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Yeah, it was all, it was all, it, yeah. We all and, and listen, the whole show is a parody of Big Brother and the real world, which we love, and we love Disney, and we love yeah, we love the Simpsons. We had plenty yeah. of Simpsons jokes. Uh, we did not love Bill Cosby, although we liked <laughs> like uh, made that clear I, I though. Liked Matt <laughs> I was a Fat Albert fan. We did like Fat Albert, so yeah, we liked Hanna Barbera. Yeah, I mean, we we we. I guess we make fun of things that we love as much as as we're disgusted by. But yeah, giant South Park fans, Family Guy fans. I mean, we worked on the Cleveland show. I I, jo- I joked with someone. Uh, I was. I do like stand up comedy. I was doing a show and I went into the bathroom and this guy at a urinal was wearing a Fat Albert jacket and i just said oh cool jacket it was like embroidered and he was like oh yeah man fat albert hell yeah and he was go- i just go like oh yeah it's unfortunate bill cosby had to work and it was make a crack about that and he goes oh man i want to take off this jacket right now and i'd be like no don't worry man he wasn't the only one who worked on the show like there was plenty there's animators and writers his name isn't <laughs> the only one you can look he's right. like oh okay that's a good way to look at it <laughs> yeah only, I mean, I'm sure some of them raped people too. <laughs> they, they were in his club, but <laughs> I still like Rick and Morty, even though Justin Roiland has had some bad press lately. And I mean, they've all called him out and said he like hardly did anything, had hardly really worked on well, it. Like you said, on... Dan Harmon played some games and stuff. Apparently, he was even less attentive than that. So we we wrote on Solar Opposites for three seasons, two seasons. I don't know, two and a half or so. Yeah, and. Uh, well, we saw him twice, maybe. We saw him twice. <laughs> uh, and uh, but yeah, Mike McMahon, who he, who created and, and ran and runs that show, he was like a PA on Drawn Together years and years and years ago. And then he went to Rick and Morty, and then created Solar Opposites, and is a you know genius in his own right. Is an amazing, and it's amazing. So hopefully that show keeps going, even though just I guess they read. Did you see how they recast Justin, Matt? No, what they do? They found a guy, he's a British guy, he's doing his British voice, and the character gets hit with the voice-changing ray, and they're like, oh, I guess your voice is going to sound like that now. He's like, yes, get used to it, this is my new voice. And he's oh, like, that's so great. It is what it is, even in flashbacks, you'll see, I'm going to have this voice now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. Yeah, it was, yeah, a, it was a really my- brilliant way for a sci-fi show to do it. Mike, uh, Mike McMahon, he, yeah, like you say, he was our uh, PA on the show. And we had, I loved him so much. So he went out one day to get Pinkberry for the office. 
And he went out and he got into a car. He got the pink berry. And on the way back, he got into a car accident. And we get a phone call like, oh, my God, it's horrible. Mike was we was coming back with the, the frozen yogurt. He got into a he got into a car accident. And so we sent somebody there to go to him to get our yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and he, he talks about that. He was like, he remembers he had the car accident. He was really upset. And then when someone came, I was like, oh, that's so nice that they sent someone to help me out. I was like, I, they, they just want me to get the ice cream. That's that is literally a drawn together moment, though. Captain Hero flying in. Oh my God, our pink berry, and then just berry. flying oh. away. <laughs> and oh. Mike said, you know, at the time he had only been working at the show for like three days. <laughs> oh my God! So he was like, oh, what what nice guy? They sent someone to check on me, and then then they just took the pink berry. And he's like, at the time, it really. He's like, now that I know you guys, I, I have I can appreciate it a little more. But at the time, it was very very confusing very rude very rude <laughs> that's hilarious um yeah, uh, so I, okay i know i said last week before but okay one more just because you brought up uh working with justin Roiland and stuff and other people uh, uh people were asking about adam carolla um how is it working with him as a voice actor and stuff that was because i know he was a big name for you at the time like he was he was the big name that helped you guys get more yeah games. He did. It was, uh, well, we, we both worked with him on Crank Anchors and The Man Show. And um, Tommy Central was trying to figure out a way to keep him in the fold to keep him on the network. And so we kind of just asked him, we're like, hey, will you do this? And he's like, sure, why not? And and then uh, it was just great because I do think that played a huge part in at least getting the pilot picked up. Um, and I know that his views have gotten a little weird. He's got a little off the rails uh but working with him then was fantastic like i just loved him i don't know if he ever saw the show i don't know <laughs> if he ever really read the scripts a lot of times i would just read he's like just, just tell me what to say so i would just i would give him line readings for every line and he would just do it and, and he didn't show up to any of the table reads he yeah, uh I mean, he was perfect he was sort of outside of the voice actor bubble all the other guys were sort of friends and knew each other and hung out in some way shape or form and then there was corolla and because he's just sort of his own, he lives in his own world. But he was, I mean, so much fun to work with. And he was very complimentary, except for when he was asking when the South Park guys were going to show up. Well, that's right. He's like, yeah, he's like, so wait, who am I? Am I Cartman? Am I Cartman? <laughs> I always forget. Am I Cartman or am I the Jew kid? <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was always easy and fun to work with. Uh, yeah. Definitely in his own world. Um, yeah, I don't even know, like, like if... He would want to do the show again. Yeah, I was gonna I say, yeah. Would you, do you think he, do you think he'd even come back, or would you guys take would you guys take him back? I would listen. I would take him back. I, I listen. I don't agree with his views, but like, well, that's not a reason not to work with somebody, mm -hmm. right? I mean, unless his views are so crazy, they're just like, hey, let's go kill Jews, right? No, yeah, 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 right. But, unless, uh, <laughs> uh, he's he's all he was so good to us, and he was so great to work with, and he was so supportive of us, especially back on the Man Show days. Uh, there were a few times where he actually literally did save my ass, and he was—he's was just a—he he was a, hes a great guy. I love him, so I—I yeah. I would love him to come back. Um, I just wish he—he he felt differently about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, hey, that's always—I mean, he's a comedian, so it's like one of those things where hopefully you could poke fun at things in the writing in the show. Oh, and again, oh, absolutely, he could, he could accept the jabs and take them and dish him out and then you exactly you just incorporate it into the writing and then his fans can laugh at it and people who don't like it it can laugh at him and you have it just be a thing so yeah i think it would i think it would come become part of the show mm -hmm. anyway yeah. uh, matt dave thank you guys so much for being in, in this video and i uh, uh, bradley you're a charmer uh, only, yeah. only for you when we do this <laughs> or for anybody that you or know. anybody oh. who feeds to find us on <laughs> hey but we will uh let us let us try to find that i'd love to find that pilot the john yeah. together pilot yeah and throw, then, me the, uh, and throw me the season four script i'd love to read yeah, that for sure um, uh, and is there anything that you guys want to want to plug by the way anything you guys yes wanna... yeah, absolutely free. this sunday on abc at eight o'clock our new show, The Prank Panel, starring Eric Andre, Johnny Knoxville, Gabriel Sibide, where ordinary people come to the prank panel and pitch them their big prank ideas. And if Johnny Knoxville and Eric and Gabby like your idea, they pull it off bigger, better, and stupider than you could ever imagine. 
And the episode this Sunday night is so fucking funny. It's so funny. What happens the second, uh, the second prank we pull with this woman who wants to fuck with her son and she dresses up as a clown. What happens is insane. Uh, so please watch that because I, I, we like to make more of those too. It was the, it's the most fun show. Funny enough, yeah, I actually I I heard, heard, oh sorry, you go, go please. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying I I, I was hearing um uh is it St- Steve-O or uh talk about it on um with or Eric Andre. Eric Andre was talking about it uh yeah. with with Steve-O. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. great. Yeah, Eric Andre, he talked about quitting a few times. Yeah, exactly. It sounded Funny. so fun. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's on July 9th is the first episode. Then it'll be on Hulu. We did nine. We did ten episodes. Only nine are airing because one was banned. Let me show sure <laughs> oh, we sort of work on everything we do. Banned. Always one. Always one gets banned. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, um, it's it, pretty amazing. ABC letting us and you know Eric Andre and Johnny Knoxville, and Gabby and Jimmy Kimmel do this show. Is, it was insane. It's great. It's I would really say fun. aside from drawn together an adult animation this was this is like the most fun we have had or could have yeah and there's way more powerful people than than when we did uh, draw together so hopefully that helps us and and the premise is just again like a a pretty solid easy to understand and go ooh, that sounds like something i'd watch like premise like you hear it you go like shark tank for pranks yeah Damn. oh okay and wait who's connected you go eric andre steve or johnny Knoxville. you're like okay 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 yeah. it's yeah like yeah animated reality show all things that i'm sure ai can now come up with <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh ai it always looks disgusting though and it never it never works when you have you have to hire people to punch up what ai does then it's like just hire yeah. someone to write the original rough draft Right for now, but next month we won't need yeah. them. Next month they won't need to. Uh, the, the AI will be able to punch it up itself. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, but uh, yeah, Bradley, you're awesome. Thank you for yeah, thanks for me. thanks for reaching out. Thanks for caring about the show. Awesome. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you could help us get it picked up again. Yeah, and uh, hey, follow these guys on uh, Instagram or or whatever social media. I'll put it. I'll put it in the description and whatever. Um, but follow, follow them uh, and uh, check out what's the show again? Um, the prank panel on the ABC. Prank panel. The prank panel. Because we uh, weren't allowed to call it prank tank. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's, yeah, even though that would have just been a much <laughs> more. Theater. Yeah, then you'd really get it. Right. Uh, but uh, no, it, it, that it, was how we pitched it. But it didn't, it didn't, there were too many legal issues, I guess. Mm. Because it was that's already so when similar. Comedy becomes fun when when legal people get involved. Right. <laughs> they they love comedy. <laughs> they do. Those lawyers they make it easy for us. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, and uh, if you guys haven't checked out, be sure to check out uh, other videos that I've done. Um, but whatever, we'll see you later. Bye, guys. Peace. Bye. Bye. And, right, and Bradley, Bradley, when you want to do what happened to uh, DJ in the fro, you let oh, us know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or um, High School USA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you, should, you should reach out to Dino Demetopoulos if you've never. He is a fucking, like, original madman. I love, yeah. He was you so can cool. get him on a phone yeah, or on Zoom. You would enjoy yourself. He okay. will say anything. No, I appreciate the recommendation. I'll be sure to do that. Thanks, guys.